Today, you're going to learn how to make custom toggles. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my web design tutorial, but you could watch this full web design course at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to make custom toggles as shown here. Now obviously these are real big because I have the browser zoomed up, but presumably usually you'd have like a label over here. Um, I, either, it depends on how you wanna do it. There's a lot of different ways on on and off label or something like that, um, or a question of some sort. But these are check boxes and we've styled them 100% custom. And you can do a lot of unique styles with these. We'll do also another variation um, where we change up the appearance of these. And the reason I have these uh, kind of half semi circles is because this is, may potentially be toggle custom toggle buttons for a project that I've been working on um, that some of you may have been following throughout, you know, like yesterday's tutorial that um, that slant um, YouTube channel for guitars. So part of the play, of course, is the whole slant out that I'm, I'm trying to work in on different elements um, as shown right here. So this is just one concept I came up with. And so that's what this tutorial will be all about, customizing checkboxes and trying to do unique stuff like this. All right, so for today's question, how old were you when you got your first PC? All right, I'll answer that uh, in the, the, the description, or the, not the description, but the first pinned comment here on YouTube. Go ahead and answer it, let me know. And uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna create a, a new folder. Uh, we'll just call this Matoggle, and then we'll CD into Matoggles. <laughs> All right, code period. We'll open this, um, our code editor up, which is Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. It's free, um, based on Electron here. And um, let's create an index.html, exclamation point, quick boilerplate, link uh, is gonna be to a main, um, a CSS forward slash main dot CSS file. Toggles. All right, and then um, we'll create a CSS folder with a main dot SAS file. And then um, we'll watch the SAS. All right, and by the way, you, you'll need to imp install that um, watch SAS plugin. Just go to Google and type Visual Studio Code um, watch SAS plugin or something like that. I forget what it's called. And then you have to reload um, your Visual Studio Code. And then um, let's see, what else do we have? We're going to start with just the HTML um, of this. So we're not gonna build a full out form or anything, but we're just gonna have, uh, just to, it's literally just four lines here. So control B to get rid of that sidebar, make this a little bit bigger. And um, oh, by the way, before we do that, get control B back out, right click, open with live server so that um, any changes we make will show up here. All right, so um, let's close that out. All right, so for this, we're gonna have just a, a simple div and that's gonna help us um, just align everything to the center just for presentation purposes. Uh, a label of class, we'll call it switch here. And inside of there, we'll put our input type of checkbox. And then a span class of slider round. And that's it. All right, so this span class is necessary for creating this um, this round element for this custom toggle. All right, so depending on what you, your needs are, you may have more or fewer um, elements, but that's all we need for our demonstration. Um, also, let's copy this, um, just the, that line right there, those lines and paste them. So we have two to work with, so we can compare um, checked versus unchecked states. All right, so now in our HTML, we'll have our two regular check boxes, right? Sweet. Okay, so uh, real quickly, we're gonna set the body and HTML height to 100% and margin zero. Get rid of any default margin padding. And then also our body, we're gonna make a background color um, light gray. 
and actually we're going to make this well, why is that showing way up off screen i have to get up there <laughs> oh great uh, actually i have the the correct color code off screen right here so it's a very light gray actually so if we save this you'll see uh, that so let's um i'm going to split this this view so that we can see all the updates that we're, we're making while we code so let me do that real quickly all right get this up over here and we're ready to rock okay so um also we're going to do a real quick display grid again this isn't anything specific to this tutorial but i just want to get things centered up so justify items center and then also align items center so now they're right there in the middle all right so let's uh, get our switch out we're going to put position uh, relative and this switch is a class placed onto the label okay so position relative display block we're going to make the width 90 pixels and the height 55 pixels so you control the the height and width right here on the parent container of your inputs so then margin bottom i'm just going to put 30 pixels to get them away from each other all right and then next we're going to have our slider element so the slider position will be absolute and this slider element here is or the slider class is placed onto this span right here so that's what we're working with all right um so position absolute we're going to have cursor, pointer, all right? And then we're going to set our top 0, left 0, right 0, and bottom 0. Again, we can't see anything yet. yet. Background, we're going to say is white. Now we can see something because we actually gave it a background. And then also we're going to have a transition and we'll do 0.5 seconds for this so this is how long it will take for it to um, go back and forth uh, when it's clicked and then border we'll have three pixels solid white and then also a box shadow and we'll just do one pixels one pixel one pixel rgba it'll kind of give us like a material design sort of shadow as you can see there let me check to make sure my head isn't covering good it's not all right so that's that um we're going to reference slider before all right and then we're going to put in position again absolute and then content we make empty bottom we're going to say 14 pixels top and i'll uh, describe what's happening here momentarily background color light gray transition 0.5 seconds all right let me make sure that's all good and going all right so now we put in input in checked state plus our slider class so if it's checked then we say the background color will be black all right we're also going to put in our final stuff to make this work our um, slider dot round class is going to be border radius 35 pixels there we go and I believe I did leave out, yes, up here. We'll put in switch input display none. There we go. All right, and then we create our, our final element for our actual circular area. So that slider round and then we reference before. So we put in, um, I'm putting in, I chose uh, to put percentage values, 43%, height is 43%. Took me a while to try to get these right, by the way. Uh, so we can see those now. And I don't know why they're that color. Well, we'll figure it out, don't worry. 
Um, width, we are going to put border top left radius and 50 pixels. And border top right radius is 50 pixels to create the semicircle, the half semicircle. Um, there we go. All right. And then finally, we're going to put transform rotate Z negative 45 degrees like that. Okay, so that they're not moving, obviously. Um, so we just need to make sure uh, that we get that going. I missed a, uh, there we go. So we're going to put in input ch checked plus an slider before and let's put that back up top where it was um, or underneath this this is where we're going to put our transform this is uh, going to be translate x 47 pixels and again you'll have to experiment based on the size of your particular sliders and then background yellow All right, so for some reason I have this issue. This, why did that choose that background color? <laughs> oh man. There we go. All right, so let me show you, um, let's make this even bigger. Perfect. So again, uh, I ran through those, those properties pretty fast. Um, but what's happening is if you really want to figure out how you can customize them more, um, again, some of those were absolute pixel values I had to put in um, based on how far we want it to, to, to roll. And um, also the size of the circle was a little bit tough to get right. Um, so there was a lot of trial and error trying to get down the exact size this needs to be. And also positioning it um, with top and left inside here to fit kind of perfectly. So again, um, th those mean... CSS properties are the ones that you'll want to experiment with um, when you're trying to make your own custom adjustments. Um, I'm not sure if I like this this version. So what I wanted to do is show you how I also did another one. Uh, I kind of customized it. I'm going to say main2.css and then in control B, we'll create another file called main2. All right, and so I'll take everything from this one um, from main and paste it into up oh, let me rename that I should have named that uh, a SAS file there we go okay so main to all right there we go now it's working um, hit control B here so if we wanted to change up the appearance of these again really simple um, so I'm going to go up here. The first thing I'm going to change is in our slider uh, class right here. So we'll get rid of the box shadow. All right. And then we'll put in a uh, three pixel solid uh, black this time. All right, there we go. So that's one kind of take to take on it. Um, let's... Uh, change the actual um, the slider before it right here we're going to change this to black all right I actually kind of like that right there and there we go and that's how you can customize your sliders obviously um, you know if you have a a um, a project where you can try to integrate some of your branding in the actual UI elements. I mean, obviously it needs to be done correctly. I'm not sure if I would consider this correct. Um, there's probably a lot of other approaches I could have taken in terms of the whole slant effect. Um, but the whole semicircle, it seems like it, it would, it would definitely make sense. Hopefully from a user experience standpoint, like they understand that, you know, this is on and that's off, but eh, we'll see. So hopefully you found that useful. Make sure you answer today's question in the comments here, which is how old were you when you got your first PC and started working on stuff? Or maybe not, maybe you just play games. 
Anyhow, let me know, and I will see you guys shortly. All right, goodbye.